the FDA approval of the Pfizer vaccine is a step in that right direction. And I think more of the uh, scientific information will help us. There is a hardcore group of people who will not vaccinate for any reason whatsoever. But we want to try to reduce that by getting as many as we can persuade. Hi there, it's WAMC News Director Ian Pickus. And on this episode of the WAMC News Podcast, my conversation with Westchester County Executive George Latimer. The Democrats in his first term, he also previously served in both houses of the state legislature. We talked about coming back from Tropical Storm Henri, grappling with COVID-19 ahead of another school year, restoring faith in state government, the major change in Albany, and whether George Latimer wants to run for governor himself. Here's my conversation with Westchester County Executive George Latimer. Thanks for being with us. It's a pleasure. Uh, to begin with, what have the impacts of Tropical Storm Henri been in your stretch of the Hudson Valley? Well, because Henri moved further to the east, uh, we got the backside of the storm, which meant a lot of water. Usually, if the eye of the hurricane is to the west, you get the wind, and the wind can be more devastating for us because it can take down power lines, trees, and so forth. But on the backside, the rain gave us lots of flooding situations. It immobilized a number of our uh, parkways, uh, roads that were built back in the 1920s and 30s, and uh, right next to rivers, and uh, flood very easily. Uh, so it did uh, cause problems for us on, uh, on Sunday and on Monday in terms of uh, sort of drying out. Uh, it also had some problems in a couple of areas where we have low-lying residential populations, primarily along the Long Island Sound shore. But on balancing, if you want to be honest, we really dodged a bullet. So you and I are speaking on Tuesday. Things are pretty much back to normal now? To the greater extent, yes. We still have uh, one of the roadways is not yet fully uh, opened. But uh, by and large, we have a sunny day and uh, we're getting back to normal. Won't be the last hurricane we see this year, though. You know, Democrats in Washington have been making the case that climate change and their big infrastructure push are really two related issues. Uh, Based on what you see in Westchester County, is that true? Well, I think it is. I mean, we've seen more severe weather in the last number of years than than I recall seeing before. I mean, I've been around for 60 some odd years. And uh, what I do think is that we owe it at every level of government, certainly those of us in local government, the county, towns, villages, we've got to make ourselves more resistant to things like flooding and, and other issues that arise. And it's impossible to do it at the local level with the resources we have. We have a tax cap in place. We understand why. It's it's a reasonable uh, response to tax sensitivity. But we don't have the resources uh, that we should. That's why we look to the state and the feds to help us with uh, money to help us improve roads, improve bridges, improve drainage. A host of these things, they're not always sexy, but they can come into uh, immediate, urgent need whenever uh, a weather incident occurs. What's your top priority for Westchester County if this federal infrastructure package is able to get through the House? Well, I think we prioritized a number of capital projects along the lines I've just described. Uh, And bridges, uh, you know, not sexy, as I said, but uh, very essential. We've got bridges that are still functional, but have been around for a long, long time. Uh, Westchester was settled uh, a lot uh, sooner than many other places were. And we have infrastructure that can be 100 years old, sometimes even more than that. And I think we've got to systematically uh, go through all of those different locations. We also have sewer treatment plants that uh, serve us on our two major waterways, three of them on the Hudson River, uh, four of them on the Long Island Sound. Those need upgrades in order for us to treat sewage properly and not have any uh, malfunction. So that would be an area for uh, uh, work as well. And uh, Lord knows we've got plenty of these kinds of projects. Whenever the, whenever the resources are there, we'll put them to good use. Let me turn to another subject now. We're speaking right before the new school year, and new Governor Kathy Hochul says she wants to require masks in schools. Now, former Governor Andrew Cuomo and his parting message suggested a vaccine mandate for school employees. Um, Do you agree with uh, those two ideas? Well, I think, you know, mandates are something that you use as a last resort. I don't think they're the cutting edge situation. What we tried to do in Westchester County is raise the uh, public awareness with the workforce, both in the county government and then to the extent possible in the society to help them understand very clearly what's at stake here um, and to really try to answer their uh, objections and try to uh, address them properly. The FDA approval of the Pfizer vaccine is a step in that right direction, and I think more of the uh, scientific information will help us. There is a hardcore group of people who will not vaccinate for any reason whatsoever, but we want to try to reduce that by getting as many as we can persuade. At some point, uh, a mandate may be required. Uh, you know, we're going to work with the governor, the new governor, Governor Hochul, 
And uh, if she moves in a direction, then the county's job will be to help the school districts vaccinate as many people as possible, and then also to do the testing that goes with that. And that's what we're prepared to do as part of our public health responsibilities. How prepared are public schools in Westchester County to return to in-person instruction in a few days? I think most districts are are pretty well prepared. They went through a lot of changes last year. Um, Most of the school districts went out and bought the necessary PPE, and they have it stockpiled. Most of them have the plastic dividers that may be needed at desks to separate students from each other. I had the opportunity to tour many of the different schools, even though the schools don't report to the county government. I did serve, you know, in the state legislature when I was in the Senate. I was the ranking minority member of the Education Committee. So education, K-12 education is very important to me as a a matter of public policy. And and so I think to the greater extent they're ready. We do have urban school districts that are perpetually in financial need. And I think it will require us to reallocate resources to help those districts meet the need. But I think we all want to see in-person education. That is the best possible way for our kids to be educated. We've gone through a year where things have been up in the air, following a half a year where everything was canceled. We really do need to be back in class. But if being back in class means masks and or vaccination, then that's what it's going to take. You were once the national epicenter of the pandemic in the early days. Uh, All eyes were on New Rochelle. Now it's a year and a half later. You just mentioned a segment of the population that will not get vaccinated for any reason. Are you surprised that we're still dealing with uh, the spread of the Delta variant and going back to masking indoors at this point? Well, you know, if all factors were there, I'd prefer not to wear a mask. And, you know, I prefer to be vaccinated only when it was a necessity. As a child, I was vaccinated for plenty of those childhood diseases, mumps, measles, rubella, all that stuff. And uh, I was no worse for the wear. But uh, what we're facing now, unfortunately, is a politicization of something that really is about, you know, common sense science. And that portion of the population that refuses to wear masks and refuses to be vaccinated put the rest of us in some jeopardy, particularly when the variant shows that you can be reinfected by COVID. Now, if you're vaccinated, you might get it again, but you won't get it at a serious level. You're unlikely to be hospitalized and you're unlikely to lose your life. Uh, But, you know, I get a flu shot every year and I could still get the flu. And I know that's part of the jeopardy. I just won't get a severe case of it. So to me, it's it's disheartening as we head to going back indoors that that uh, COVID is not behind us. We thought last year we had it on the run. We thought this year with the vaccinations we have it on we had it on the run. Clearly, we don't. And and there may be no way for us who are not scientists or medical professionals to really know when this is fully behind us. But this is the long duration. My parents lived through a long depression. They lived through a four year world war. And they had the stamina to get through it. And I think we've got to have the stamina to get through it as well. Well, along those lines, where do things stand today in Westchester County in terms of both COVID cases and vaccination rates? Well, COVID cases have been on the rise now for the last seven weeks. Uh, We have about 2,800 active cases. And an active case is somebody who's tested positive in the last two weeks for COVID. We work on the belief that after two weeks, having uh, contracted the disease, if you're not sick, then you're built-in antibodies have fought uh, fought it off. So what's left are those people within the two-week period, and that's about a 2,800 number right now. That number is up from about 200 in late June, but it's well below our dual peaks of 11,500 in January and 12,000 last year in the heart of the pandemic. We're a long way away from saturating our healthcare system. We have about 2,700 hospital beds in Westchester. We have 160 ICU beds with the capacity to add 50 more ICUs if we need it. Right now, about 3% of that 2,800 are hospitalized. So we're in the vicinity of 85 people or so hospitalized. That is that is a low number given our hospital structure. But uh, our vaccination rates have been pretty good. When we worked off of our old census data, which had us at 967,000 people before the recent census report, we had broken the 80 percentile vaccination for 18 uh, and older adults. I know Nassau County is a bit ahead of us. Most of the other counties around us are somewhat behind us. The numbers have ratcheted differently because we now have a new census number, which puts us over a million people. But I'd say in general, Westchester has done very well in vaccinations. And uh, just this day, I was at a vaccination center at Romantic High School, and we had some folks coming in to vaccinate. We vaccinated 100 some odd people in Yonkers at the public library over the weekend. And we're still working on the vaccination side of the equation. Let me talk to you about politics a little bit. As uh, you mentioned, you've served in both houses of the state legislature. As we speak, we have a new governor in New York State, Kathy Hochul. First of all, um, what kind of relationship do you have with the new governor? I have a good relationship with with Kathy. During her years as lieutenant governor, uh, she was in Westchester a number of times. I also got to know her during her tenure when I was in the state senate, the assembly. Uh, Very down-to-earth person. 
she served in local government. She's been a county official. She was a town board member. So she's walked in the same moccasins that I've walked in as a councilman and a county legislator before, you know, moving up the line. And I think that sensitivity is very welcome. Uh, it helps uh, it helps us understand where she's coming from, but it also helps her understand where we're coming from. So, uh, you know, I'm hopeful that you'll uh, take over the reins at a difficult time. Lots of things are happening, COVID being one of them, uh, and she'll be a stabilizing force. She also, you know, makes history as the first woman. And uh, for all of those out there that, that want to see us move in a more diverse uh, direction, Westchester's got a lot of women elected officials, a lot of African-American and Latinx elected officials, but uh, statewide, uh, this is a first, and uh, we're happy that she's able to make some history. Now let's hope we can all make good public policy together. She said in her brief remarks after being sworn in that her goal is to have people uh, regain trust in government. How does she go about doing that? Well, I think it's a day-by-day process, and I think every one of us in public office have the same responsibility. The way we conduct ourselves every single day, the way we treat other people, uh, both in the public and then the people that work for us, that we create a climate that uh, allows people to be themselves at the same time, have direction from a central authority. Uh, the governorship of New York is an extremely powerful position. It's much more powerful in its government than a county executive or even the mayor of a city is. And I think the fact that, that she's decisive is important. I think it's also important that she's inclusive. And if she does, in fact, reach out to all of us, and we get a chance to have an opinion, get a voice at the table. All of that is a positive that we look forward to. Uh, do you have interest in being governor? Your name's being floated as a potential candidate in uh, next year's primary. Well, I've seen about 20 names in uh, speculated, and it's always nice to be speculated. I'm running for re-election to county executive. I have a great job. I enjoy it. That's what I'm doing right now. At this stage of the game, uh, you know, my general sense is all of us should uh, give Kathy all the support we can and help to be as successful as we can. And then, you know, the page will turn in 90 days or 120 days, and then we'll see who's interested. Right now, I want to do a good job for Westchester, and I want to be helpful uh, as part of the state. I'm listening very closely. You are not ruling out a run for governor. Well, I would say if I hit the New York State lottery, Ian, then you should give me a call and we'll have another discussion. Uh, <laughs> but for the moment, I am running for county executive. That's all I'm focused on, my friend. Would you endorse Kathy Hochul for re-election? She says she's going to run for a full term. I expect uh, to meet with uh, the governor You know, at some point in time. She's got a long list of people to meet with. When she does, I'm sure we'll have a conversation about her race, a conversation about my race, You know, and we'll, we'll let that play out when it does. But I, I really do think, uh, and I'm not being Pollyanna-ish when I say this, uh, she's in the office now. She's got to take reins of the government. I think she needs us to not think about politics too much yet and think about what we have to do governmentally. If we start you know, people lining up to run and starting the uh, divisive process that comes out of a natural competition for office, we're going to hurt the state. And we don't want to do that right now. We need to heal and we need to find unity. And and, and I think that's the smart way for all of us to conduct ourselves, uh, certainly, you know, in, in, in the period of time between now to the end of the year. And is there something in particular that you were not able to get from state government when Governor Cuomo is there that you will bring up with Kathy Hochul when you talk to her? Well, look, I think Governor Cuomo was very good to Westchester County. Uh, Most of the serious asks that we have, we thought were calibrated, and uh, we received the support we wanted on our localized issues. I think Governor Hochul will listen very carefully. I do know that there are competing interests all over the state. Sitting in the legislature, you see that what Westchester wants is one set of things, but there are counties all across the North Country, Western New York, the city of New York, and the different boroughs in Long Island. Everybody wants something. And everybody can't always get exactly what they want. So I think having a voice, having a seat at the table goes a long way. And let me add, we have a great seat at the table with State Senator Andrea Stewart-Cousins, who's the leader of the Senate uh, uh, majority. Uh, Andrea and I have been colleagues for over 25 years. We've served together in the Senate and the county legislature. And I might add, Carl Hasty is a baseball throw in the Bronx away from Westchester's border. And he is, the assembly speaker has been very helpful. So I think Westchester has friends available to us. I think we have to you know, make asks that are reasonable and, and that really address Westchester's needs. And then to the greater extent, we and every other county, we have to help solve our own problems, work together with our towns, cities and villages and address our problems, turn to the state when we need state help, but really show that we can run our own jurisdictions. Westchester County Executive George Latimer is a Democrat. Uh, thank you for taking this time for us, and we'll look forward to keeping the conversation going uh, sometime soon. Ian, it's a real pleasure. Thanks. 
All right, that does it for this episode of the WAMC News Podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, I'm Ian Pickus.